Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So a lot of you have been emailing me about the bank collapse, Silicon Valley Bank, and one of the things that I have to ask you all is, why? Why? Oh, MacBook repairman. Asking me about professional finance is kind of like asking somebody at the Genius Bar to fix a MacBook. It's just... It's, it's just bad. That's not where you go to get advice. But let's dig into it because there's a lot of people giving financial advice today that probably shouldn't. And one of them is Forbes. If you take a look at Forbes, let's just take a look at how the number 20 best rated bank of America of 2023 is doing. SVB Financial Group right here on Valentine's Day. America's best banks. Listen, hey, I'm not the only person that shouldn't be given financial advice. At least I tell you that up front. So let's dig into this. So what happened with this bank? What happened with this bank is bunch of people were going in and they were tapping into their cash deposits. Now, as a result of that, the bank is going to have to be able to actually produce the cash for them. Most banks don't keep 100% of your money. They invest it into a bunch of other stuff so that they can make money themselves, so that they could fund their operations, and also so that they're able to provide interest to the people that actually are, have accounts at the bank. Now, they have a lot of their money in treasury. They have a lot of money in treasuries. This is a type of bond. So just to give you a very, very, very hyper basic overview of how this works, let's say I had 10 million bucks, right? I have 10 million bucks. I can give it to the government and say, here, have fun with this money for the next 10 years. You, a, they're going to give me interest on it every single year. So let's say interest rates are 4%. On that 10 million bucks I lent the government, they're going to give me $400,000 every single year. And B, when the 10 years is over, I get my $10 million back. Now, if I plan on allowing you to, to keep that money for the entirety of the 10 years, then there's really no problem here. I'm going to get $400,000 a year for doing jack shit, and you're going to give me my $10 million back in the next 10 years. However, what happens if I need that money back sooner? Because I don't know. I need to pay all of these people that are asking my bank for money that weren't. I wasn't expecting to ask my bank for money. What happens is I now have to sell those bonds. Now, a bond is a guarantee, as long as they don't you know, go under, that the U.S. government is going to give me back that $10 million. However, if I need to sell that bond, that bond does have a variable value based in the market. Maybe I'll be able to sell that bond for $10 million and $200,000. Maybe I'll be able to make a $200,000 profit on it if the market is up. If the bond market is down like it is right now in a high interest rate environment, maybe what happens is if I want to sell that bond right now to somebody else, I can only get $9 million for it. So I just lost 10% on my bond. I just lost a million dollars. Now, right now, high interest rate environment because we're trying to fight inflation. So the value of the bonds is down. And they are trying to sell these bonds because they need to pay their customers that want their money because they deposited in the bank. So what happens? Well, they're going to sell their bonds so they can pay their customers, but because they're not, they were assuming we're going to hold the bond until the end. We're going to allow the government to borrow this money for the full 10 years. And now I have to sell this bond to somebody else at a discount. They're screwed. They lose money. And the banks that are doing this are losing billions and billions and billions of dollars. And eventually that is going to cause them to be uh, massively, massively screwed. So uh, one of the things that I found particularly interesting today is that the Fed is announcing a new bank term funding program. This offers one-year loans to banks under easier terms than the Fed would typically provide, and it says $25 billion is available. Now, what's the point of raising interest rates? If you raise interest rates, borrowing money becomes more expensive, which means less people will borrow money. Less people borrowing money means less people buying things, means less demand in the economy, which is supposed to combat inflation. When you have super low interest rates, you have people doing all sorts of crazy shit. You have people, I don't know, like raising GameStop to 400 bucks, raising Bitcoin to $60,000, the pricing of housing throughout the country almost doubling in the course of a couple of years. You have a lot of people doing crazy shit when it's very easy to borrow money at stupidly low rates when you're injecting a lot of money into the economy. Raising interest rates is your way of trying to claw some of that back. Raising interest rates means you are increasing the cost to borrow money. That's what it is. Now, they're not saying, okay, we give up. We are crying uncle. We're not going to raise interest rates anymore because the economy is too weak to handle it. They're still keeping the interest rates. They're not lowering interest rates. They're just releasing a funding program that allows banks to receive loans under easier terms. What are easier terms? Easier terms when you're talking about a loan would be a lower interest rate. So you're not lowering interest rates. You're just offering money to banks that have made bad investments under easier terms. It's a funny thing. It's like we can't, we can't admit that we're not going to keep increasing 
interest rates because if we do, we will lose the inflation battle. But if we keep increasing rates without offering you any sort of morphine to ease the pain, the banks will fail and then we will be screwed. So I, I don't want to, it's kind of like when I step on a scale and I see the number go up a little more than I want in the morning because I, I, I got, it used to be 188 pounds. I've lost almost 30 pounds. I got down to 158, I got down to 155, went back up to 161. It's horrible. I'm trying to get down to 150. But anyway, I get in the scale and then, you know, I just kind of start like rearranging myself in the scale. Like I feel like I step down in the scale too hard. So I try to step on the scale like a little bit lighter. And like at the end of the day, it doesn't make an effing difference because gravity is what it is. As long as I'm standing on the scale, it's going to give me this number. So we're going to keep increasing interest rates. Interest rates are going to keep going up to make it harder to borrow money, more expensive to borrow money. But then we're going to increase, well, then we're going to have these separate programs on the side that offer loans to banks under easier terms. So it is easier to borrow money. I mean, the entire point of this is to decrease the liquidity in the economy so that there's less money sloshing around out there so there's less inflation. But then when shit hits the fan, you're not going to stop increasing rates. You're just going to put out a program that makes it easier for banks to borrow money that have made bad investments, which increases liquidity. It's like, it's like one or the other. I can't even criticize the people that are making these decisions to this point. I, I, I genuinely can't. Like most of these bad decisions were made in 2007, 2008, and then again in 2020 and early 2021. Like anybody who's in charge right now is essentially just managing the decline of an airplane that ran out of gas at 5,000 feet and trying to figure out where can I land without killing a plane of 20 people. Like, there's virtually nothing you can do right now that would be considered the right decision. Like the time to make the right decision was a very, very long time ago, right? It really is just like, which route is the least miserable of the three miserable routes? Like, do we want to land in the water? Do we want to land on the highway and hope that there's no cars or trucks around us? Do we just want to go? Anything is better than just doing this. Like, but where, where, where should we land? And like the, the I don't know, just re reading this, it just kind of makes me sad. But above all, like, how the... Forbes, America's best banks. Are you... SVB Financial is number 20. And I, the funny thing is at the time that I'm reading this, I'm sure this is, this is probably going to get worse by the time I upload it because of Spectrum Internet. I trust the financial system to decline at a more rapid rate than I expect Spectrum to be able to upload this video. Another bank seems to be getting screwed, New York Signature Bank, and I can only imagine how many others were stuck with these treasuries that they really thought, you know, okay, we're going to have this treasury for 10 years, we're going to get interest rate for 10 years, and that's that, that never thought they'd have to sell them, that are now going to have to sell them in a down market. Because again, if you if you own treasuries, it's like owning treasuries, it's not like buying Tesla or GameStop at the at the height of the bubble. This is they're very, very even when the market goes to shit, they, they really don't go down a lot. Like if you're somebody who owns treasury bonds in your portfolio versus something like the S P five hundred, even when the S P five hundred's doing this, treasuries are doing this. But even if it is a little bit of ripple, if you need to sell all of them, even if they're only down like a couple of percent or five or 10%, if you're a bank and you're buying a bunch of stuff, you know, that couple of percent really does kill you when you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars and all of your customers showing up and saying, hey, I'd like my money now. Anyway, that's about that. Uh, again, I am not a financial investment advisor. I'm not a financial services professional. You should listen to me just about as much as you should listen to Forbes. Just to be clear, I'm just going to put that out there. You should, when it comes to financial advice, trust me as much as you trust Forbes. That's about it. As always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.